SCP-2108 Another Son Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures The abandoned warehouse building containing SCP-2108 has been acquired by the Foundation and designated Containment Site 2108 Core. No Foundation personnel are to enter SCP-2108 Core unless strictly necessary for testing. The general operations of Site-2108 are to take place in the site's other buildings. Site-2108 Core is to remain under security appropriate for a sensitive Foundation site. Wherever possible, objects and conditions known to affect SCP-2108's properties are to be managed within known minimally disruptive ranges. SCP-2108 itself is to be kept under constant surveillance in a sealed, opaque room. Attempts to move SCP-2108 or otherwise alter its properties should be avoided. The containment chamber is to be cleaned daily by remote control or automated drones to remove all living organisms massing more than 0.5 grams. Living organisms are not to be exposed to SCP-2108 or SCP-2108-A. Video should be converted to grayscale or false color before viewing. When direct observation is necessary, personnel should wear full-body opaque clothing with goggles tinted to block SCP-2108-A's characteristic spectral peaks. SCP-2108-A skin exposure of 80 joules per kilogram in any 10-week period is disqualifying for further SCP-2108 interaction. Instances of SCP-2108-B are to be contained in species-appropriate enclosures at least 10 kilometers from Site-2108, except when authorized for testing. Deliberately creating instances of SCP-2108-B requires prior authorization from the SCP-2108 project lead and in all cases must use the fewest and least massive subjects possible. Description SCP-2108 is a luminous object resembling a miniature star with a chromosphere 1 to 4 meters in diameter, ranging in color from yellow-orange to green. It is selectively intangible and possibly non-material, but appears similar in structure and composition to a main-sequence star of roughly one solar mass. Its surface bears visual granules and sunspots, it appears to undergo periodic flares, and it has a gaseous corona 0.5 to 6 meters deep. It emits 1.8 to 15.3 kilowatts of light, a biologically insignificant level of exotic data-redacted radiation, and very little radiant heat. It cannot be moved or affected by deliberate physical manipulation, except by some instances of SCP-2108-B. See below. SCP-2108 specific properties, such as size, location, mass, absolute luminosity, spectrum, etc., vary in poorly understood ways. All of its properties are correlated non-linearly with one another as well as with at least 12 other factors. These additional correlates have not been fully enumerated, but are believed to include the current solar wind flux, strong local magnetic fields, the movement of all Corvus individuals within 13 meters of the object, the extent of the next predicted solar and lunar eclipses, the time elapsed since a runaway nuclear fission reaction took place in the Northern Hemisphere, and the number and combined mass of extent SCP-2108-B instances. Light and radiation emitted from SCP-2108 is designated SCP-2108-A. Its spectrum varies somewhat, as do all of SCP-2108's properties, but always retains characteristic peaks at 663, 615, 448, and 297 nanometers, i.e. in the red, orange, indigo, and near-ultraviolet. In addition, the object's exotic radiation output is its only predictable property. It is always a known function of SCP-2108-A's electromagnetic spectrum. Footnote 1. See St. Jacques, T. 
Radiation of Unknown Provenance, a partial characterization of SCP-2108-A. Observer, a SCP Foundation Journal, 2014, page 220. Intense or prolonged exposure to unmodified SCP-2108-A causes a poorly characterized transformative syndrome in living organisms, which are then designated SCP-2108-B. The speed and discomfort of SCP-2108-B conversion are directly proportional to the speed and intensity with which the transformative SCP-2108-A dose was delivered. Footnote 2. Specifically, the speed of transformation is proportional to the total SCP-2108-A dose and to the inverse cube of the time over which it was applied. Without continued SCP-2108-A exposure, instances of SCP-2108-B revert to their original state within eight weeks. See Addendum 2108-E-46693. The changes present in SCP-2108-B are believed to result, at least in part, from protein folding interference by novel substances produced upon skin absorption of SCP-2108-A. The precise effects vary between taxa, but generally include an increase in external pigmentation, production of novel pigments which absorb spectra related to SCP-2108-A, and in autotrophic organisms, a novel set of photosynthetic organelles and pathways better optimized for use of SCP-2108-A. Structural and organ-level effects are usually subtle, with more pronounced changes affecting the organism's metabolism and biochemistry. Extended exposure may produce more dramatic structural effects. Testing proposals are currently under review. See Addendum 2108-1 for a partial list of SCP-2108-B alterations. Addendum 2108-1 Test 1 Subject Three mature American goldenrod Euthamia gramniofolia Plants In fruit SCP-2108-A exposure Discovered within SCP-2108 in Site-2108 core Total dosage unknown. Conversion period unknown. Results Initial discovery of SCP 2108 B. Plants' leaves distinctively longer and thinner than typical for E. graminifolia. Leaf and stem surface pigmentation purplish blue with slight cyan iridescence. Apparently a protective sunscreen layer. Underlying tissues deep blue green due to development of SCP-2108-B typical photosynthetic systems. Fruits rich in several uncharacterized alkaloids. After removal from SCP-2108-A, plants recovered entirely within eight weeks. Test 3. Subject. Colony of Carpenter Ants. Compenotus pennsylvanicus. Greater than 200 individuals. Exposure. Discovered within SCP-2108 in Site-2108 core. Total dosage unknown. Conversion period unknown. Results. Dosage presumably proportional to time spent outside the nest, as effects were most pronounced in the workers tasked with foraging. Thorax, legs, and mandibles coated in several thin layers of translucent, deep orange wax, and comb-like chitinous appendages developed on the dorsal antennae. Signaling pheromones almost completely replaced with a novel set of chemicals. Resultant confusion between foraging workers and larva care workers likely caused the colony's rapid decline. Queen completely unaffected, but killed by alkaloid poisoning after being fed seeds of affected goldenrod. Colony then collapsed completely. Test 9 Subject Two albino Norway rats Rattus norvegicus Female, 18 months old, 330 to 375 grams Exposure 160 joules per kilogram Full body skin, fur, and eye. 
240 minutes. Conversion period, 66 hours. Results. Exposed skin developed light gray pigmentation. Fur developed dark blue-gray pigmentation with dark blue modeled markings whose exact patterns differed by individual. Behavior during conversion period did not suggest any particular discomfort. Animal recovered within three weeks. Test 10. Subject. Two albino Norway rats, Rattus norvegicus, female, 18 months old, 335 to 360 grams. Exposure, 160 joules per kilogram. Full body skin, fur, and eye, 10 minutes. Conversion period, 75 minutes. Results. Comparable to test 9, but with additional slight elongation of tail vertebrae and hind legs. Subjects chewed and clawed at legs and tails until restrained, with vocalization suggesting discomfort and or pain. Joint swelling, colorful urine, and other symptoms of endogenous pigment poisoning abated within 24 hours. Animals recovered within three weeks. Test 11. Subject. Two albino Norway rats. Rattus norvegicus. Female. 18 months old, 320 to 370 grams. Exposure, 160 joules per kilogram. Full body, skin, fur, and eye. 240 minutes. Light used was an exact match to SCP-2108-A's current spectrum, generated by filtered flood lamps. Conversion period, not applicable. Results. No effect. Test 12. Subject. Same individuals as test 11. Exposure. 90 joules per kilogram. Full body skin, fur, and eye. 240 minutes. Light used was live, full color surveillance video of SCP-2108. Conversion period. 80. Results. Effectively identical to test 9. Test 15. Subject. Human. Male. 27 years. 79 kilograms. D2108-14. Exposure. 160 joules per kilogram. 20 square centimeters of skin. Torso. 240 minutes. Conversion period. 12.5 hours. Results. All skin developed purplish-brown pigmentation with short blue-green ventral stripes. Subject reported altered color vision, as well as difficulty speaking and eating due to excessive salivation. Blood rich in a novel substance with significant stimulant effects in mouse models, but none in the subject himself. Recovered within three weeks. Test 16. Subject. Human, male, 27 years, 79 kilograms. D2108-14. Exposure. 160 joules per kilogram. 20 square centimeters of skin, torso. 240 minutes. Note. D2108-14 was re-exposed after recovering fully from test 15. Conversion period, 3 hours. Results. Comparable to test 15, but with additional complications of the shorter conversion period. Joint swelling, muscle spasms, mild hemophilia, greater loss of vision, and colorful body fluids. Symptoms abated within 36 hours. Subject recovered within 7 weeks. Repeated re-exposure tests pending approval. Test. Redacted. Subject. Human female, 38 years, 64 kilograms. Redacted. Exposure. Accidental. 125 joules per kilogram. 5 square centimeters of skin and eye. 5 seconds. Post hoc estimation. Conversion period, 
five minutes. Post hoc estimation. Results. Skin developed purplish brown pigmentation with blue green ventral modeling. Color vision altered, apparently tetrachromatic. Skin hairs replaced by shafty oval structures with rudimentary photosynthetic capacity. Onset of SCP 2108B characteristics was swift enough to cause immediate, severe endogenous poisoning. Symptoms included muscle spasms, systematic neuralgia, temporary blindness, and acute renal failure. Poisoning symptoms abated in three weeks with inpatient care. Severe sunburn on exposed side of face healed normally. Subject recovered fully within eight weeks. Addendum 2108-2 On the 12th of February 2014, Agent Aaron Moynihan, Researcher Tom St. Jacques, and Researcher Chelsea Elliott, representatives from Mobile Task Force Theta-4, Gardeners, arrived at the future Site-2108 to assist in early field study of the anomalies that would collectively be designated SCP-2108. At the time, SCP-2108-A and B were collectively designated E-31181. SCP-2108 itself had not yet been discovered. The Mobile Task Force Theta-4 personnel were directed to the SCP-2108-B entities, which consisted of scattered vegetation growing in the cracks of the concrete warehouse floor and began initial examination after establishing basic field precautions. However, when Dr. Elliot attempted to examine a leaf sample through a small magnifying lens, she received a burst of concentrated SCP-2108-A. The exposure converted her into an instance of SCP-2108-B within five minutes. The resulting endogenous poisoning required hospitalization. Simultaneously, the sudden emergence of a large SCP-2108-B instance caused significant changes in SCP-2108's properties most notably causing it to triple in diameter and luminosity while instantly relocating four meters straight down. This placed it below the level of the warehouse's skylight, simultaneously making it visible for the first time and irradiating all personnel present. Footnote 3 Before Incident E31181-A, SCP-2108-A shown through the skylight of SCP-2108 core but SCP-2108 was not visible from outside the building. This phenomenon has not reoccurred and remains unexplained. Agent Minoyhan, Dr. St. Jacques, and on-site agent Shoshana Siegel became instances of SCP-2108-B over the following four hours. The additional converted biomass caused further erratic movement of SCP-2108. The resulting positive feedback loop would likely have converted much of the surrounding city, if not for routine testing at provisional site Redacted, in which SCP Redacted underwent its weekly partial core meltdown, resetting one of SCP-2108's major property correlates and instantly relocating it to a position inside Site-2108 core. Strategic application of disinformation and amnestics ensured no lasting public exposure. All personnel converted to SCP-2108-B recovered within eight weeks. See Addendum 2108-E-46693 for records of extended observation. Addendum 2108-E-46693 Like the other personnel involved in Incident 31181-A, Dr. Elliot appeared to recover completely from the effects of SCP-2108-B conversion. She completed quarantine and was cleared for duty upon recovering fully from her injuries. However, recent events indicate this assessment was premature. Routine surveillance carried out on Dr. Elliot after the incident revealed irregularities in her eating habits. Although initially consistent with her established habits, these disturbances grew steadily more pronounced after the incident. When she fasted for 16 straight days in late April, with neither any apparent preparation nor any ill effects, her case was flagged for closer and more prolonged examination. 
Over the following months, surveillance established that Dr. Elliot's food consumption patterns are closely correlated with their exposure to daylight and comparable full-spectrum lamps. She also displays marked symptoms of seasonal affective disorder, despite no history of the condition, for which she self-medicated with full-spectrum lamps. Additionally, on seven separate occasions in May and June, she was briefly hospitalized for acute accidental poisoning. All seven incidents appear to have been caused by plant toxins whose sources were either entirely absent or available only in quantities far smaller than apparently ingested. Footnote 4. The toxins included black walnut hull extract, caffeine in concentrations greater than could have been ingested normally, and aconite sap in sublethal doses. The origin of the toxins is unknown. Taken together, these phenomena suggest that Dr. Elliot has acquired anomalous properties beyond those characteristics of SCP-2108-B, which have persisted and strengthened since the incident. She has been provisionally classified as E46693. Proceedings to classify her as an SCP object were filed in June 2014, but have been postponed indefinitely pending O5 review. Thank you for listening to SCP-2108, Another Sun, by Photosynthetic. If you enjoyed this SCP, please like and subscribe, and follow the link in the description to the SCP Wiki, and vote up the article to support the author and the SCP Wiki as a whole.